editing sound? Is that on? Hold on. Or before the, like I, I heard the camera do make that sound, like pretty early. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. We had uh, the camera crew had had uh, mounted camera equipment on our kayaks for the day. Throughout the day, the camera equipment at some point in time shut off. I'm guessing. Um, so uh, I was in a specific area, um, which is known to have chain pickerel in it. I did raise a big fish. He came right to the kayak, and basically I ran out of water as I was retrieving, and I flipped my lure back out to see if I can entice him to get back, and then my phone rang. So I had answered my call as, as I just reeled my line in so I could address, because maybe there was something about this, the recording. See a video in the back. Oh, God, where does, where's that? They, he indicated that he wanted uh, well, me to check the camera to see if it had shut off, and it had, they, they so we, we started to back up, and That's as I was doing that, name. the other competitor, okay. we don't need to name any names. You bastard, you did too. While I was, che while I was checking camera, <laughs> and Andrew Burt came up to the cast, and he's like, I think I got your fish. I'm like, you bastard. <laughs> he, knows, he knows what he did. I should have just left the phone until I landed the fish, or, or at least caught him, so. I was figuring that fish was probably, probably 22, so 24, between 22 and 24, and totally, totally possible. Not the phone call's fault that I didn't land the fish to put me into third place. But I was pleased with ninth. I mean, obviously, I would have rather third, but you know, there's uh, there's more there's more events. Don't take that personal, Paul. It's not you. It's not you, honest. No, I'm <laughs> Paul. Bastards. No? Yeah. Moving into the afternoon, John Kale grabs a 10.5 inch yellow perch. Don't lose. And a 21.5 inch chain pickerel. Darren Moran with a 7.25 inch chub. Travis Melanson with a 7.75 inch smallmouth bass. You know, it was, it was like two o'clock. I had some decisions to make. I, I wanted to get a catfish. And then I was also thinking for pickerel, so I was coming through this channel. The channel's there about like eight to 10 feet deep. And I pulled out my phone and I looked at it and I'm like, this is kind of a quicker way back and it's like two feet of water. I'm gonna take a shortcut. And on the way, I'm gonna catch a pickerel and I'm gonna catch a catfish. So I, I scoot in there and instantly, I gotta throw up my, my PDL drive. I pull up my rudder and I start doing this. <laughs> and I'm looking, I see all the perch running everywhere. That took me down this windy path with trees and boughs everywhere. And I got out to the end of this channel and I thought it was gonna connect. <laughs> and it didn't connect. Anyway, I got into this really skinny water and it turned into a ditch. I can see it. I can see the bridge. Huh. I roll, I took my shoes off. I took my socks off. I rolled my pants up. I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I did this. I got out of my kayak and I sunk into muck. And you know what? Raccoon tracks, I don't know, muscat, muskrat tracks, like bird tracks. I don't wanna go back. How the hell do I go back? Tracks everywhere, okay? Oh man, I can't believe I'm even here. And I'm stepping into this thing, first thing happens, frog jumps over. Fuck, oh my phone. I cannot believe, I can't believe what I'm doing. Anyway, I drag my kayak and I push my kayak and I pull my kayak through that thing and I make it to the other side and when I pop out, thank you. Yeah. Travis? John Monserol's right there. <laughs> what? I didn't even know there was, you know, a, 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 even a canal or a river that came there. That's not a, that's not a waterway. And I didn't catch any more fish after that. You know, the, just the cherry topper, it was like you had a crappy day and here's just a little extra. I just carried my kayak through the friggin' wilderness. That's how I finished my day.
As time winds down, John Cale and Renee Peltier are in a tight race for the win. Renee takes a gamble to gain valuable last minute inches. With 15 minutes remaining, Renee Peltier manages to land an 18 inch sucker. With that last minute catch, Renee Peltier secured first place, also claiming the three Lunker bonus points with a 23.75 inch chain pickerel, a 10 inch yellow perch, and an 8.5 inch white perch. John Cale finished second place on his home river. Chris Bingham started his series with a third place finish. Newcomer Rehard's Dimpers surprised all anglers with a fourth place finish. And Brian Cothra rounded out the top five from Quispam Sis. The one person that did surprise me was Travis. I thought he would finish better. When you look at the series as a whole, you know, I gotta start making some gambles. Am I gonna try for the sturgeon? Am I gonna try for the striped bass? Am I gonna think maybe I can get a muskie at the end of the year? Any one of those can put me back into the game. Spent way too long sitting over top of suckers in like four feet of water. A lot of people didn't have great days and some surprises, you know, some people did really well. Uh, a lot of people caught suckers today. We've gone toll seasons with nobody catching a sucker. I did not catch a sucker. No, no, I needed to get a white perch and a chain pickerel. I didn't, I didn't get either. I did get the yellow perch, but. With the opening tournament in the books, the anglers now start developing their individual plans for the next stops. We're fishing Grand Bay Westfield a little bit earlier in the schedule this year. You're gonna see a lot of people head to the bottom to try and take advantage of any stripers that still might be in the system, where Travis caught a big striper last year. You know, it, it plays a little bit different in terms of strategy and, and what fish you're gonna be targeting. I think most guys will probably try to get that surge in there if they can. Always done really well in Oromocto. I have a tendency to get a finger stuck, hook stuck in the finger in Oromocto too. Spent the entire tournament once with one stuck in my thumb. We fished there now three or four times, three or four years, so I have an idea of where the pools are and stuff like that already. Um, so it's more a matter of tides, weather, water temperature. Probably a lot of people upgrading a lot of species in that system in that area. You've got sturgeon, big smallmouth, big pickerel. The Oromocto is normally the most well uh, attended events out of all of them. So we'll see what this year brings. Yeah, I was chumming with uh, Gasparel. So not Gasparo caught at this tournament. Gasparo I caught last week. What? Are we allowed to do that? So yeah, I took a bag of frozen Gasparo. I brought him here with no heads, no tails. I don't doubt it, yeah, John. Well, he knows what to do, man. He's been doing this for years. I've never chummed water before. You know what, I'll that's be my next research. <laughs> <laughs> There's some species, including sturgeon, that sometimes will prefer fish over worms. Some fish will just come because there's blood in the water. It's not, it's not for me. If it works for him, great. Yeah, chum in the waters, I, I never would have thought of that in a lifetime. 